What's good, Ken Gonda? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson, back with another episode of Dear African Americans. And today, this topic hits home to my heart. Do African Americans or Black Americans try to force the Black perspective through everybody else's eyes? In other words, do we try to force our Blackness on everyone else? And do we want everybody to see the Black perspective through our eyes. Now, I want to talk about this because I was able to read a brother's tweets that we'll get into in a minute. And I saw this because Jonita, um, she brought this to my attention. You know, Jonita here at King Ghana Studios. And there's a big controversy right now regarding singer uh, Adele. Now, Adele is a huge pop superstar right now. Uh, she's from the London, London area, Nanny Kingdom. And there was the Nottingham Festival, I hope I'm saying that right, or Nighting Hill Festival. And obviously this has to do with, you know, a lot of the carnival things that go on in the Caribbean culture. And she came to the uh, Caribbean culture event in this photo, right? You see what she had on, Bantu knots and uh, the Jamaican uh, kind of halter top there. And a lot of black people were saying that she was culturally appropriating the black culture. Um, a lot of black Americans were going in on that on Twitter. A lot of blacks were, uh, black Americans were more offended. Now I did see a lot of the Caribbean people that were from Jamaica, from what I read, they didn't have a problem with it. What they were saying is, you know, hey, she's just dressing up for the event. There's not a problem. But there's an African brother who I believe is in the UK, but based out of Nigeria. And he had some, some very interesting things to say about African Americans trying to force our perspective on other people. So let me go ahead and read what he had to say and I'll come back with what I think. All right guys, so basically I'm reading these tweets from a brother by the name of Kelvin Odance, uh, at Mr. Odance. So you know if you guys uh, know him on Twitter, give him a shout out and uh, let him know that he's on the King Kinda channel. Uh, but he writes this here. Still trying to understand how this debate debate about Adele's hairstyle benefits future generations of black people around the world. And can black Americans stop forcing other people around the world to view race through the black American perspective? He also says in this next tweet, black Americans are so culturally disconnected from other black people around the world and they make no effort to bridge that gap. They instead continue to ign ignorantly view themselves as custodians of the cultures of all black people around the world. They somehow assume that other black people around the world share the same or share the black American idea, experience, perspective about race and racism. Whereas what they need to be doing is to travel more, learn more, connect more with other black people around the world. And I personally still don't get how black Americans want to eliminate racism by enacting and promoting lifestyles and cultures that are racist towards non-black people, especially whites. I have had this debate several times and I honestly still don't understand it. I know someone will come here to pontificate about how racism has to do with power structure and whatnot. But for me, discrimination or segregation against any person or group of persons based on their skin color is racism. As simple as that. So we heard what the brother had to say. And without being offended by what he's saying, because obviously we know that the African American criticism from the African community, uh, it could be a little disrespectful. It could get disrespectful. In this way, I don't feel any disrespect from what he's saying as an African-American. I believe that uh, he has some good points. Some points I don't agree with, but I do believe that as African-Americans, our perspective a lot of times is unique to us. It's different from what a Nigerian-American may experience or what a Ugandan-American might experience or what a black British person may experience. And we know that because, you know, obviously we've heard about Art Cathy and what, what she experienced in the Gambia. Um, I've experienced similar things in, 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 uh, in Kampala. And I think that's a, a big uh, situation 
is with us, it's hard for us to deal with other blacks that don't share our experience with racism, how we see uh, Caucasians. And I think what the brother's trying to say is that we need to, uh, as African-Americans, understand that, you know, we don't control the black perspective, which I, I agree. Every black person has their own thought process towards the black perspective. But I would like to say this, as far as saying that African-Americans need to travel more and we need to understand other people more, I think that that's a, uh, the wrong ideology. I believe that we need to understand each other more, right? That's the whole purpose of the diaspora. Because in Africa, me coming to Uganda, I learned I had to have patience with understanding how Ugandans think about certain things. Now, not every Ugandan is the same, but obviously my values and what I've been exposed to is different than what Ugandans have been exposed to. Um, I've been exposed to people that are, were, were like Malcolm X growing up. The Nation of Islam was in my neighborhood when I was growing up. I had people who were uh, who who had dealings with the five percent nation. You know, Black Hebrew Israelites. You know, African Americans. We come from more of a um, a militant thought process structure when it comes to white supremacy and racism. And 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 and, and my dad was very much like that. My mom was involved in. Um, you know, in the 60s and the civil rights struggle and things like that. My grandmother lived through the civil rights movement. My, my grandfather lived through the civil rights movement. So all of that beats through my heart. It's in my veins, right? It's a part of my culture. And how I see race has a lot to do with what I personally experienced, what my parents experienced, what the African-American community has experienced. When we're dealing with other cultures and other communities that are not maybe in America, we can't force our perspective on them. As much as I believe that my perspective about race and how Africa should be is right, that's my perspective, I can't force that on nobody else. I have to respect where people are at. As a global black community, we have to learn how to meet people where they are at. Not everybody is going to be woke like you, all right? And let me tell you this, as an African American coming back to Africa, I'm gonna do a whole episode on how when you come here, when an African-American comes back to Africa, it's a lot different than the African that's raised in Africa. See, we get, it, everything makes sense. You know, everything comes together full circle. And when you come here, you become a little bit more on fire for the continent. You come here a little bit more upset with a chip on your shoulder because you know of all the things you've been robbed. And when you're dealing with the local Africans that don't see it your way, it can cause friction. And I believe that, you know, we need to be able to understand that everybody isn't where you are at. You, some of you brothers and sisters in America are, are real woke. You understand uh, subtle racism. You understand that. Others and brothers and sisters don't look at it like that, all right? It's not their fault. They just haven't been exposed to it. The only thing that I can say is so that it doesn't become a shout match or getting back and forth in the, in the, in the comment section is number one can you and the people who disagree can you agree on anything and if you can't agree on anything leave each other alone there's no need to go back and forth you feel this way about the black community i feel it another way if we can't get along we'll stay away from one another that's the best situation but as a global black community we have to understand that everybody has a unique perspective right and again we deal with people with love we deal with them where they're at. We have patience for our people. And that's how we go forward in the process without, you know, you Africans or you African Americans or you Caribbeans. Once we start talking like that, then it's, you know, it becomes very, very divisive and stuff like that. At the end of the day, we got to understand that the people who rule over us and have an advantage over us, they look at all of us as the same the blacks who happen to be at the bottom of the barrel. So guys, it's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The African American. Subscribe at the bell. I want to stop the show right now. Guys, thank you for the amazing month of uh, September. We had over 740,000 views, over 9,000 subscribers, and we did that because of people like you. Keep supporting us. Thank you for everything. And as you know, keep it real. King Gonda forever.